Warning, the show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. The show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. This This is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick. Here is my co-host. Angel. And today we are joined by Shamar. Hello, What's Shamar. up, world? Why don't you tell us about yourself a little bit? What's your, what's your favorite food? So my favorite food? I mean, I think the, not so much my favorite food. I think the coolest sounding food out there in the world is the dragon fruit. <laughs> uh, it was like something straight out of one piece so i was like you know what this probably doesn't taste good it doesn't look appealing at all but you know what it looks like something straight out of a cartoon and <laughs> if it's going to give you superpowers i will indulge wholeheartedly so have you ever tried dragon fruit before no not at all but oh. um it's just like when i came across it i was like oh okay i, th- I think that's <laughs> um homework for you then <laughs> should definitely go and get one and yeah we'll i don't even know how you cut those things that taste will surprise you <laughs> yeah because i looked at it and i'm like this looks like some straight off of mars or something this does not look like it was grown on planet Earth at all. Like, <laughs> but i feel like it could also be one of those things that's like highly disappointing once you actually eat it because yeah. it looks like so much hype it looks so cool and then maybe the flavor is just eh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have a feeling it, it probably tastes and smells just as I don't know if you know that one fruit I forget what it's called where you it, it, it smells terrible and it looks just papaya. as bad is it papaya or is I that don't, I, have, I have a visceral hate for papaya I was just about to say it, was, it sounds like you have some kind of history with papaya the seeds look really gross like the first time I saw cacao cacao papaya <laughs> get cut into i thought it was bugs coming out of it oh my gosh and then i thought it was rabbit turds and then i was told oh that's just papaya seeds and i'm like oh. that's gross <laughs> well now i'm gonna have nightmares tonight so thanks for that yeah i'm you know turning I, people into papaya haters one at a time anti-papaya protests i don't know what a foot tastes like but that's what I imagine a foot would taste like. Foot would taste like. Yeah. Well, you never know. Some things are better left unsaid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, we're not talking about papayas today, I think, to the relief of Angel. Um, today, we're going to talk about <laughs> dragon <rant's> fruit, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't think tastes like feet. Um, but it's, Angel, have you had dragon fruit before? I've had simulated dragon fruit like Maybe dragon fruit that? flavored um like bubble tea oh okay oh, that was, but it was thing? yeah but i don't think it actually contained any real dragon fruit <laughs> it was, i thought you were gonna say it was like 3d printed dragon fruit <laughs> <laughs> made from paste made from like shrimp paste <laughs> straight from the x-men danger room simulated yeah. Dragon fruit. <laughs> yeah that's crazy all right, so before we get the show started, uh, we usually like to cover what's in our palate, like what we've been eating lately. So Bianca, mm-hmm. a part of our invisible people who, is work, who works on the show, <laughs> she gave me a box full of Scooby snacks, which what? I didn't know. I mean, I've never watched Scooby-Doo. Ooh, never. So I I'm don't really know cookies. what it, but it's just cookies. Oh. And they're chai cookies and they're, so good so good (laughs) but can you buy it in the store she made them oh cool damn nice yeah shout out to our editor oh yeah then send the etsy recipe so i can try it out yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah i have oh they're in the fridge i would show you but i don't want to get up (laughs) how about you shamar what have you been eating lately uh what have i been eating like good question i've been eating a lot of jamaican food recently because mm. i'm visiting my mom right now and for the life of me mm. i cannot cook 
food. Oh, same. Me. High five. <laughs> I can cook. I just can cook food for my own home country. So nice. whenever I need it, I either go to my dad's house or my mom's house and I relish in it for as long as I'm here. And then I go back home and it's pretty much just anything that's not good food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to eat healthier, trying to have you know a lot more green, drink a lot more water, you know, just cut the sugars back and the fats and all that fun stuff. Right. And, uh, yeah. Every now and again, I uh, indulge and I indulge hard. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, anything healthy you can possibly think of, I'm trying to uh, put that more into my diet. Nice. What's your um? What's your mom's dish de resistance? What's her uh, her go to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I guess, curried chicken, curried goat. Oh, Ooh, curried everything. That pretty sounds much. amazing. I'll take it. Yeah. Curried everything is pretty much her go-to. She can cook it with her eyes closed. Damn. That sounds I'm delicious. I'm so jealous right now. <laughs> curry. <laughs> nice. How smells amazing. Oh, I'm jealous. Well... My brother recently graduated, so we I cooked some steaks for him, and that was we ate. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm actually pretty pleased with myself with how those steaks came out. What's your steak? I'm gonna guess. Don't tell me. Medium rare. No, I'm a no. I'm a Chicago blue kind of guy. What does that even mean? You cook it in super high heat for a minute. So you get oh. a charred outside and red oh. as blood on the inside. On the inside. Yeah. Oh, why is it blue? Why do you? Why is it called blue? I actually don't know why it's called blue, oh. um, but blue is pretty much rarer than rare, like blood. Oh, so yeah. it's just corpse. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So today we're going to talk about dragon fruit. Um, we're just going to cover a little bit about where you can get it. What what exactly is dragon fruit? It's fascinating history and why it is called dragon fruit, mm-hmm. and how you actually can grow your own dragon fruit. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah. So I'm dragon grow- fruit originally actually comes from Central and South America. Um, okay. Today now today though it grows all over the world, uh, mostly in Southeast Asia specifically in Vietnam and Malaysia. Vietnam mm-hmm. is actually the highest exporter of dragon fruit and they account for more than half of the country's food exports. That's how okay, much okay. dragon fruit they pump out. Okay. Yeah. 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 It arrived in Asia through Bit- Vietnam, actually, through the French over 100 years ago. So I guess the French colonized part of South America and Central America and then brought the dragon fruit over to Vietnam. Okay. No, I'm assuming they just wanted to be able to grow it closer to France, and they found that Vietnam was a good place to grow it. This place is warm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Plants like this. We'll settle here. Yeah. But, and what's interesting about dragon fruit is we know it as dragon fruit around the, mostly here in North America, but actually in South America, where it's originally from, it's not actually called dragon fruit. It's called pitaya. Oh. Oh, that's really close to papaya. Oh, <laughs> Oh, this is meant to be. <laughs> Ain't just getting a traumatic experience. Huh? <laughs> I already don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so pitaya is what it's called in South America. I guess pitaya is, I don't know, how to, I'm not the most fluent in <laughs> Spanish. Um, and also around the world, they also have different names. It could also be known as strawberry pear or its translations from different languages can translate to the dragon pearl fruit, the bell of the night, or the Cinderella plant. Oh, so fairy tale Yeah. I guess it's it is. It's pink. It is, yeah. So if anyone, if you've never should, seen a dragon fruit before. describe what it looks like. Yeah, so a dragon fruit is a pear-shaped fruit with kind of a leathery skin that looks like scales, I guess. It's kind of similar to if, you know, if you've ever seen an artichoke. Yes. Yeah. It would be so an artichoke had a baby with Daenerys's eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a strawberry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Essentially, that's pr- probably how it got its name is from it looking like an egg, um, and it being mystical in color because it's not like artichoke where it's greenish. A dragon fruit typically comes in a pink or magenta-like color, 
Um, yeah, it's really leaves. not like a natural fruit no. color. I'm at telling all. you, not from this planet. Like, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like my shirt. Yeah. yeah. People who are watching video. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yes. Please, please find out if it's from Earth because <laughs> I'm determined to find this out. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually four kinds of dragon fruit out there, and each of them differ in its color. So the most common one, as we just mentioned, is the pink dragon fruit with a pink or magenta-like color in the outside with some green tips on its like scales, if you want to call it that. Um, And I think three of the four different kinds of dragon fruit do share the same color in the outer skin, but inside they're a little bit different. So one would have white meat inside with black seeds. The other one would have purpley colored meat inside with black mm. seeds and mm, the other one would have pink or magenta like or similar to its actually skin color its meat's also the same in color interesting and have black seeds um so yeah all of them will have black seeds i guess um, the fourth one though is different from all of them because this one comes it's with an yellow actual skin. dragon oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah unfortunately it's not a real dragon but it is a yellow skinned one with oh, cool. white meat in the inside as well, which is similar to the common dragon fruit, which is pink and magenta skin with white meat inside. What I found also kind of cool is that in America, there have they have different nicknames for the different kinds of dragon fruit, which I don't know how true this is. I only found one source that said this, so I don't know how true <laughs> it is, but the classic dragon fruit with the pink skin and white meat, they could also be called Alice, Cosmic Charlie, David Bowie, LA Woman, or Soul Kitchen, as some of the nicknames given <laughs> to it. That, those all sound so made up. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can just look at a fruit. I'm going to go point at a kiwi and be like, you are called... That's a fuzzy navel or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're um, Timmy's scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. That's a good one. Her kiwis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, pink skin or pink meat if pink skin with pink meat dragon fruits could also be called bloody mary's red genias or voodoo child mm. Ooh, voodoo child and the pink skin with purple meat is called american beauty mm. which is funny because the pink skin with purple meat is i think the one that's most different of all four types because it doesn't have it's not a scaly it actually looks more like an avocado than an artichoke so to call something wrink- wrinkly American beauty is <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sexy. Hey, hey. Yeah. It's all subjective. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so these fruits typically grow anytime to four to six times a year in tropical climates. Um, but before we go into how they're actually grown, uh, this is the moment of truth in figuring out why it actually is called the dragon fruit. So in some ways, Shamar, you actually might be right, because from myth and legend, it's believed that the fruit comes from real dragons. Okay. Oh, I knew it was going to stop. Mystery solved. Yep. All right. (laughs) Uh, The origins of the fruit is said to come from fire-breathing dragons that existed thousands of years ago. Mm. And as we know, dragons aren't some tiny little weak animal. They're usually seen as symbols of power and luck and meaning they're often believed to be highly prized. So the dragon fruit comes into play because it's said that when you slay a dragon, a dragon would breathe out a dragon fruit as its final breath. Interesting. So soldiers who would want to claim to be able to kill a dragon would often have have to to present the the dragon fruit (laughs) as proof that they killed the dragon. And this is all mythical backstory that it's yeah. supposedly interesting this is the legend of the dragon fruit its history um, oh, right to i guess from there you could use that fruit to grow more dragon fruit instead of grow more dragons <laughs> <laughs> so as like a last breath and a last parting gift yeah. does that mean that you have to plant it to grow another dragon or is it kind of an egg situation <laughs> where you warm it and cuddle it and then maybe a baby dragon will I think hatch? It's, I think it's seen as a seed more than it's seen as an egg. 
So he, oh, okay. it spits mm-hmm. out a seed. Maybe it's just a dragon that ate too many watermelons and got a few <laughs> seeds stuck <laughs> in its throat. And- <laughs> <laughs> Conveniently, every dragon goes through this problem. Yeah. <laughs> or like, oh, it. It's not time of the week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a hairball. <laughs> yeah. Or the dragon fruit's kind of like the ring from Lord of the Rings, and then you just get more tempted to want to eat it, and then you do eat it, and you become the same dragon that yeah. you feed. Oh. So it's like a lineage of dragons. True. What if what if m- multiple people eat the same the same fruit? fruit? The same fruit? Uh, do you become uh, multiple dragons or do you become multiple parts of one dragon? Mm. Oh, good question. It could mm. be like a Power Ranger situation where you have to... A Captain Planet situation where they all kind of put their powers together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they all become the dragon of whatever. Yeah. yeah. I just Inter- remembered I wanted to group cosplay Planeteers. <laughs> Ooh, that would be fun. <laughs> Never so, too late. It's never, a, never. It's a thrift it. shop, a thrift shoppable costume. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm gonna kickstart that Captain Planet movie somehow. Yeah. Let's do it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the other belief as well during this time is being able to eat the meat of the dragon you kill can also give you extra powers. Mm-hmm. Planet powers. Planet powers. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. Um, now, this might be the mythological origins of the dragon fruit. In reality, it actually doesn't grow from a plant. It grows from cactus. <gasps> dragon fruit's a cactus? Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I guess it's one of the few fruits that grow out of a cactus rather than, say, a tree or a bush or oh. a plant. Um, so there are I four... mean, I do see little... Like little IKEA cacti always have a little <laughs> happy, very brightly colored bulge. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's the cacti nut. So yeah, it's like a cactus bit. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially four different kinds of cacti grow the four different kinds of dragon fruit we have that exists. Three of them come from one genus, the Hylocereus genus, and one of them comes from the Stenocereus genus of both genus belonging to the cactus family. Okay. Uh, the word Hylocereus itself is a mixture of Greek and Latin. Hyla meaning woody in Greek, and Sereus is Latin meaning waxen. So, okay. The woody wax. wax. So, yeah. The Hylocereus genus of cactus is also known as night blooming cactus. Hmm. And the reason for that is because the Hylocereus cacti also create the moon flowers. So the same things that create dragon fruit are also the same ones that create moon flowers. As I know as moon fruit. That's so cool. Okay, I want to go get a little right cactus. <laughs> yeah. That- have growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, on the flip side, the Stenocereus genus is also a mixture of Greek and Latin. Again, the Sereus meaning waxen, and the Stenos meaning narrow. This is because of their looks. The Stenocereus type of cacti tend to look like the ones that are really thin and mm-hmm. column-like. So it's really cool that two different types of cacti, I guess, can give birth to just a dragon fruit. Right. Um, so yeah, this then uh, when it comes to the dragon fruits themselves, we talked about the four different kinds of dragon fruits. So the three that belong in the Hylo series genus are the ones with the pink skin with white meat, pink skin with purple meat, and yellow skin with white meat. So all three of these will look like the artichoke-like dragon fruits, which are yeah. the ones that are scaly. Uh, I was guessing the yellow one would be the odd one out. Yeah, I thought so too, but then I was surprised when they said, no, it's part of the Hylocereus. Um, and then the lone Stereocereus dragon fruit is the one that looks more like the avocado. And they're known also as the sour patayas. So flavor-wise, I guess they would be more sour than um, the other three dragon fruits. Okay. Yeah, this one's actually, it's really like if you Google it, it's really not appealing. 
<laughs> yeah, it sounds more mythical, but it doesn't sound like anything that you want to eat. Like no, it's the derpy really? dragon. It's the yeah. one that will <laughs> that's gonna hatch the the dragon that has that's like cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> It, it it looks like what the dragon's scrotum would look like. <laughs> I mean, when you hear the name, it doesn't sound like, oh, I can't like, like somebody said, you want to have an orange, you want to have a mango. That sounds appealing. You hear dragon fruit, I'm like, Ugh. I mean, it sounds cool, but I feel like it's not going to go down easy. So no. this, this better give me some superpowers or something. <laughs> inside? Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, speaking of that, before we go into how to eat, how you would eat a dragon fruit, um, we'll cover a little bit about the moonflower cactus, because I think it's really cool. Um, the reason it's called the moonflower cactus is actually because it only blooms at night for one day. Oh, and then it, and then sadly it turns into romantic. No. Yeah. So as um, I think typical fruits come from flowers, so the moonflower or the cactus would give birth or pump out a moonflower to bloom at night <laughs> and then make its way to becoming a dragon fruit almost instantaneously uh, the moonflower the moonflowers itself are also known as ladies of the night yeah. i wonder okay. if that's why there's an association between dragons and princesses maybe we're getting deep now we're getting yeah. deep <laughs> this is going to be the fruit that wakes up a lot of questions now <laughs> Yeah, if you're if you're short on love, just eat a dragon fruit. Eat a dragon fruit, and crazy things will start to happen. Yeah, you'll you'll start <laughs> seeing women at night. <laughs> All of a sudden, I want to bang that guy over there. I don't know. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> All of a sudden, all these your your pheromones—they're just irresistible for some Yeah. <laughs> What's actually interesting is the fruit itself, the moonflower, is actually also edible. They actually use it on different herbs, herbal mixtures as well. So mm -hmm. maybe dragon fruit is love potion for men and dragons. <laughs> moonflower is mm -hmm. love potion for women. I don't. This know. must be the that must be the fruit that donkey used to get the dragon. Oh yeah. <laughs> It just didn't make any sense how that dragon was like infatuated. <laughs> now we know. Now we know the reason. Oh, yeah. the Clearly, Shamar is jealous of a donkey being oh, able to find love with a dragon. <laughs> well, I guess, okay, fine. We'll, we'll stop talking about how dragon fruit is a love potion. It totally is, though. It is. Just, just don't yeah. tell anyone. Just don't tell anyone. Obviously, obviously the internet isn't happy about that. Yeah, toward toward three listeners. If you if you guys ever get a hand in a dragon fruit, if you want to eat it, it's pretty straightforward actually. Um, you just need a knife. <laughs> okay. Uh, so do. the skin does look pretty tough because it is leathery looking, but like any fruit, you could essentially eat a dragon fruit just after you harvest it. Um, if you do want to figure out what a ripe dragon fruit is when you're in a grocery store. Usually, here are some tips about it. The brighter the dragon fruit, usually the more ripe it is. Also, the more even colored it is, the more ripe it is. So, the blotches in the skin actually is a good signification that it's overripe. So, if you, if you find a dragon fruit with pimples, it's a little too ripe already. Mm, okay. So, uh, you know how potent you want your love potion to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The more pimples is actually the more potent. Okay, and probably a dragon's about to burst out any second. <laughs> yeah. slaughter the whole grocery store. Ready to pop. <laughs> exactly. Another way to determine its ripeness is also by squeezing the fruit. So giving it, it should squeeze a little, but not a lot. Okay. The squishier it is, the riper it is, the firmer it is, the less ripe it is. Which is a, actually, I think, a general rule for fruits. For fruit in general, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to eating a dragon fruit, the skin itself is not edible. Okay. Uh, it's definitely probably... Unfortunately, because it's so pretty. Yeah, it's more decorative. I guess it's like a banana peel. Like, you could eat it, but... <laughs> but at what cost? It would suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it's poisonous, so... 
Okay. Is there any health benefits or anything, or like? It's a lot of fiber in the in the skin, so I mean, might be. Are we talking about the skin, the benefits of the skin, or benefits of the fruit? Actually, both. I think it's both fibers, both in the inside and out. Mm. Yeah. So when you actually find the perfect dragon fruit that you like, with a good amount of firmness, uh, even colored and bright, you the best way to actually eat it is just cutting it in half. So it's not like an avocado with a big seed in the middle. You actually just, you'll be able to slice right through it. Yeah, right fruit, ninja, fruit ninja, that shit. Is that the kind of fruit that you need to have like a ritual or like a ceremony to like gracefully cut it open? Not unless you're trying to find love, I guess. I mean, you can if you want. It'll yeah. make it more fun. Yeah, put the picture of the person of your dreams in front of the dragon fruit. And then burn that picture as you're slicing it open. If the picture burns at the exact amount of time it takes you to cut the fruit, <laughs> uh-huh. wise, wise words it. by me. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna end with a mystery. There's nothing. There's nothing to it. It's just. That's it. <laughs> Make us our resident witch now. Yep. The rest, the rest is up to you, the shaman. Yep. The rest you just have to experience it. Yeah, you just have to do it yourself. You'll find out what happens. It's, mm. it's oh, life is better left with surprises, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, I guess it's debatable, but uh, <laughs> 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 but in all seriousness, yeah, just cut the fruit in half. It's fine. Um, you'll see. You'll be able to, I guess. Yeah, with a spoon. <laughs> yeah, you could eat it with a spoon. Um, it's like I guess mangoes minus the middle part. Like if you cut the the meaty part of the mangoes you just kind of scoop it all out um, you could scoop the whole thing out or you eat part by part of the spoon um, you could cut it in cubes i think most people like cutting it in little cubes and eating it as little snacks um, you generally just want to avoid the skin so if you use a spoon to scoop out the all the meat you want to cut out the pink skin still because it is it's not that it's gonna kill you it's just not it just doesn't feel good not <laughs> Yeah, like if you don't have a dragon fruit close by to you, grab a banana and go eat the banana peel. That's what it <laughs> yeah. probably will feel like. Oh, geez. Disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you could actually also, if you don't want to eat it raw, you could also grill it in skewers. The meat's pretty firm. Ooh. It's not like, what? it's not super smooth, or it's not squishy and soft. It's usually pretty firm. It's not crunchy like a daikon okay. or whatever it's it's still it looks squishy. squishy yeah it looks squishy and it will feel squishy but it's still firm mm. like a pineapple right like it's not it's more like a pineapple i guess no it's not really like a pineapple <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. passion fruit and um, we're just yeah, throwing fruit, fruit, fruit names we're passion. just throwing fruit names right at this point <laughs> it ain't no watermelon that's for sure watermelon's pretty special yeah. it's yeah. texture yeah it's not a- it's a whole other tier of fruits altogether. Yeah. Um, the fruit itself is best served cold or chilled. Um, I don't know. I've had dragon fruit. It's it's good either way. Yeah. But it well, it's important. It's like an apple or most fruits. You don't want to open it up and then just leave it to eat tomorrow. Um, yeah. Finish yeah. that sucker off. If you cut it open, eat it right away. It oxidizes yeah, it pretty quick. quickly as well. Okay, true. Yeah, and as we are still about food, we there are many ways you could use dragon fruit. As Angel mentioned, bubble tea is a pretty common place you'll find dragon fruit. Yeah. Ooh. Real Oddly. form or fake form? Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is super pretty, um, dragon fruit meat, if you've never seen it, especially the common, the white um, meated ones. Because it's like, you have this like creamy looking white, it's like if you have like yogurt and put a shitload of chia seeds in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's and it then is freeze very it. decorative. Yeah. Yeah. The contrast of the black seeds with the skin is really nice. Um, it's also good to add it to desserts. So a common one is dragon fruit sorbet. That's a good way to do Ooh. it. Okay. Um, and just like anything, it's also good with alcohol. Mm. <laughs> uh, can you soak a dragon fruit in some vodka yeah actually there is such there is actually a dragon fruit you're vodka. like actually i'm drinking it right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
There is, I think, a recently a company did make dragon fruit vodka. So, mm. oh, okay. I'm gonna have to invest into some of that. Just yeah. to that good. Yeah, cool. I've never tried it, but I heard dragon fruit margaritas are also really tasty. Yeah. So that goes well with tequila. You know, I'm definitely gonna go to Whole Foods. <laughs> and get a dragon fruit. <laughs> yeah, maybe Folks not today. Tomorrow. Fruit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and surprisingly, actually goes well with fish as well. So, really, white fish like cod and tuna, um, like cold or, or cooked. Well, you could cook and you could have it on the side, or you could cook it with it. Um, True. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can. I see. I can see it being in a, like a poke bowl. Yeah, yeah, me too. Actually, mm, that sounds hmm. tasty. <laughs> yeah. Time to hit up every single poke place. Do you have yeah. dragon fruit? It's, like, it's fine. I brought I brought my own. <laughs> Just cut her up and uh surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, so that's 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 that's, a, that's what we have about dragon fruit. Um and as we do with every show, we ask two questions about what we do. Is it healthy or is it good? When it comes yeah. to healthy, apparently it's super healthy, and this is what caused the big craze about it around the world now. It's a good source of fiber, which makes it good for digestion. Okay. Um, and it's loaded with antioxidants to keep your skin youthful and your hair intact. So, it is indeed a love potion. Establish <laughs> <laughs> that. Um, it's also right. a good source of vitamin C, calcium, phosphorus, vitamin E, B, and lycopene. Lycopene is apparently good for anti-aging and preventing diseases. So mm. there you go. Healthy fruit. Load it up. It's a pretty mythical, mystical food after all. Yeah. Uh, right. When it comes to flavor, it's pretty, it's sweet. Well, the, the hylocerious types of dragon fruits are pretty sweet. And the stenocerious dragon fruit is sour. I would say that the like stenocerious sour. one is juicier and stronger tasting. So dragon mm. fruit actually is, it's not super tasty. Yeah. I, good luck to you. <laughs> no. But it is, it tastes good. It's just not strong in flavor is what I mean by that. So, okay. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. So most people say it's comparable to somewhere between a kiwi and a watermelon. Interesting. Okay. So it's yeah. like a mild, watery type fruit. Yeah. Pretty okay. much. Mm -hmm. And which is, I think, why it's good with fish because it doesn't overpower the fish. It doesn't overpower the fish. Yeah, right. In Ooh. addition to dragon, dragon fruit. fruit. So, pocky sticks, yeah. any flavor, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm going to go with wasabi. Wasabi. Love. <laughs> what, what, what's your what's your secret ingredient shamar okay so we have dragon fruit we have pake what did you say mick wasabi, wasabi. Uh, okay so we got spicy we got i think we need spicy. something savory yeah something savory. Hmm. i guess we can go traditional and just throw some chicken in there all Hang right on. chicken yeah. Oh gosh. Chicken pocky sticks. Wasabi, wasabi and dragon. And dragon. There, there's your challenge for your chef friend. Throw it his way and then as soon as he goes back to me. I'm, I'm actually really excited for this stuff. <laughs> we are wait. too. He'll make dishes out of like he's like, uh I'm feeling this type of mood, so he'll make food based off his mood. Get a picture and be like, okay, so look at this picture. Um, if I translate this picture into a plate, and then he would just go off. So he's pretty vivid, pretty vivid like that when it comes to cooking. So, <laughs> oh, sweet. Ex yeah. I can't wait what he's going to come up with for this then. Yeah. But that's our episode on dragon fruit. Um, do you have any plugs, Shamar, you want to drop while you're here? No. No plugs at the moment right now. I'm kind of just low key, just doing my thing right now. And uh, when I'm ready to come out of the shadows, 
hopefully you'll see me. Hopefully. So right now, nice. just kind of stay tuned and uh, wish me luck. That's all I can say. Good right luck. Good luck. Good luck. Maybe you should eat a dragon fruit for <laughs> good luck. Yeah, I should probably drink. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to get some bubble tea with dragon fruit in it. Ooh. Uh, I'll work my way into the actual dragon fruit. I'll have some simulated dragon fruit first. <laughs> Dip your toes in first. You can't go SCAC. full fruit. Right yeah, away. you never go full fruit. You never go full <laughs> dragon fruit. You never go full fruit. <laughs> 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 Gotta acclimate. Yeah. All right, that's our show. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. This, this is smorgasbord. smorgasbord. Have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow smorgies. This show is created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn, music by Mick Narciso, and videography by Bianca Goico.